happy to have Derek with us. What's it been like for you to come back to Cleveland and see so many friends that you worked with for many, many years? That's been great. It was good to see the team when they came up to Minnesota, but got to see all the guys I work with in the front office and, uh, and just reconnect with people I hadn't seen in a while. How did your role get expanded here? Because you kind of came here and they took a flyer on you, to be honest with you, and then over time, your role really seemed to expand and mushroom rather quickly. You know, I think when I came in as an intern, Bauer grounds a single just off the tip of Santana's glove into right. Mark Shapiro and Chris Antonetti and, and Mike Chernoff, my, my bosses at the time, gave me a real opportunity in a number of different spaces. I had a chance to work in amateur scouting, some in player development, got involved in international scouting and each process there, and uh, eventually over time built some skills in each of those spaces. And ultimately, when Tito took over as our manager, had a chance to just connect with him, and uh, we hit it off quickly. And, was really embedded with the major league team over that period of time. So now with the play with Maurer aboard, Twins hoping to expand on a one nothing lead. So no, the first pitch he saw from Tomlin hit one uh, over the wall in right field. So we just want to be careful here. We don't talk over the first pitch in this event. <laughs> he takes a strike on the outside corner. Derek, it's funny to hear you uh, call Terry Francona Tito. Of course, that's his 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 father's name, a guy that I watched when I was a kid and had his baseball card and all all of that. But Terry Tito has said about you how much of a contribution that you made over the years in uh, evaluating pitchers and in looking at ways to evaluate uh, pitchers and bringing information uh, to them. Is there is, are there any things that you can describe uh, that uh, that you that you learned that you developed that in uh, in that kind of evaluation? My ball to center hit right at Chisholm Hall for the first out. You know, I, th I think what I was really fortunate to be around was a number of great pitching people in this organization. Guys like Tim Belcher, Mickey Callaway, a number of our, our different people in scouting uh, who had done some work in, in pitching, and I, I really devoured. Uh, any information I could find in that space, and, and I think what I was able to bring to the to the organization was kind of a, a synthesized approach to that. And uh, what we were able to do was, was build a program that came all the way through the minor leagues with arm strength building, and what we were doing mechanically, and ultimately pitch development that allowed us to eventually help some players along, and ultimately reach their ceilings. Batter is Max Kepler, and he takes inside the ball. And if you had only had that when you were a pitcher in college, right? Where you, you don't, there's no telling you you might be here in another role. <laughs> I don't think there was anything that was going to get me to this level. So, you know, it's interesting uh, over time how the game changes, and then within that, the models change. For a long time, the Twins were the model franchise, winning divisions, contending for divisions year after year after year, and then Kansas City was the model for how to build an organization and develop pitching and all that. But now Cleveland seems to be the model. What is the Cleveland model and how did it get established as quickly as it did here? I think with our group we always sought to find uh, some guys who were overachievers and, and really had the makeup and the mindset to work and take each step uh, within uh, on their development path and, and, and seek to make themselves better. So use information to make themselves better. Change their workout routines, commit to an off-season program. And I think in guys like Corey Kluber and Danny Salazar, Carlos Carrasco. Kepler drives one to right, retreating is Geyer, and on the warning track makes the catch out number two. And a special moment for you today as you come back to Cleveland. You were presented your American League championship ring, which you are not wearing right now. <laughs> and really, at least for one day. <laughs> I mean, look at how beautiful that thing is. It was a special moment. We had uh, in Tito's office with Chris Antonetti and uh, Mike Chernoff had a, a nice private moment there where they handed it to me, and, and that was that was very special for me. Those guys mean a great deal to uh, to me personally and professionally. So it's a it's a good looking ring. It sure is. Kenny Vargas, the batter. And as we talked a moment ago about how the game has changed, so has the size of the ring. Uh, Roy Swanley <laughs> held up his <laughs> ring, and your Cleveland yeah. ring is about three times bigger than his. And we won. And <laughs> <laughs> I know things have changed over time. I, I like I like Roy's ring. That's a great that's a great ring right there. One and zero to Kenny Vargas. Called out on strikes his first time up. I mentioned to you, Derek, when uh, we were looking at it, it's in, the ring that you have is just beautiful, and we were talking about wearing it or not. And I, I do wear mine 
a lot of the time. And you find that it's it's it be, it's a community uh, artifact. It, you know, I wear it around because people like to see it. And, I, and, and uh, the 1987 World Series, the first World Championship in Minnesota, it meant so much to the fans and the players and the almost symbiotic relationship that there was between the, the two. Vargas drops one into right field. Maurer will round second slam on the brakes. He thought about it for a second. Vargas keeps the inning alive with the second hit of the inning. And so this, it really is kind of a symbol of, of that that everybody wants to see. And, and I, I feel like the fans of Minnesota owed it as much as as much as I do. I think all of us. I think all of us feel that. All of us players feel that way. No question. Felt the same way. I, I think the fans of Cleveland last year got behind that team and really found a way to support uh, the, the, the run that this team went on. And I think what you're talking about. This is why we do this job. You know, it's 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 to have the pride in this team and, and the fans and I, I can't wait to get our team in Minnesota to that level where we're competing you know, in those moments in, in the fall uh, to, to bring that type of championship caliber baseball to the Twin Cities. Eddie Rosario the batter Twins trying to put together a two out threat here. Six of their seven runs last night in Chicago were produced with two out hits. And Rosario fouls it back. I, I think it's fair to say Roy uh, uh, his 87 twins team that won that first world championship they they surprised everybody the twins got on the fans got on <laughs> a, 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 a playoff run in September and ran through it I, I as someone who was part of it back in 87 I woke up about a month afterwards and realized this team got to and won the World Series was there that element of surprise for you with the Indians last year you had you got a new job about a month later, but I mean, was there? Were you guys surprised that you did as well as you did? I think you know, as Roy can attest, you get into a playoff scenario, and those are the best teams in the game, and uh, lots of things can go your way and maybe go against you in those situations. But you know, when a team competes and comes together, and you build a culture in that clubhouse that supports one another, special things can happen, and, and I think that was the case for this team last year. One and two to Rosario. Had a conversation about just that kind of thing with Chris Jimenez, who also got his uh, his ring like like yours uh, today, and and uh, just saying, you know, when you when you start in spring training, and you know how hard it is to get to the top of the mountain, and you all look each other in the eye, and you, you want to kind of lock arms and take the hill together, and and, and so many times you don't, and uh, when you finally do, it's a special relationship with it. With, with each other as a player all the way through the organization, isn't it? Absolutely agree.